All right, we're uh, I'm Tim Bailey. I'm with uh, Chris Holder and Journey Home, the guitarist, and uh, we're going to do some uh, interviews. This interview here I'm excited about because uh, this is Mike Bowen, a uh, uh, rhythm guitar player and uh, tenor singer with Chris Holder and Journey Home. And uh, I've been looking forward to this interview because we're going to ask some general questions uh, to Mike, but at the end, Mike's going to testify a little bit about something that the Lord. And, and I'm excited to hear it because it really touched me. Uh, so, Mike, first of all, uh, we want to ask you uh, and let the people connect with you a little bit. How long have you been with Chris Holder and Journey Home? Chris and I met probably uh, 10 years ago, and um, I guess we started singing together shortly thereafter. Uh, been, been friends ever since. We met in church. I didn't know him from Adam's house cat. I, I told you earlier this morning I wouldn't. Have, I sung a song in church that he liked when he asked about it. And had I known Chris was a professional at the time, I, I would have uh, probably not sung that song. But, uh, God works in mysterious ways. God had a plan. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Mike, you uh, you sing tenor uh, with the group and uh, play guitar. How long have you uh, been singing tenor and playing guitar? Uh, tenor is probably my favorite role to sing. Um, I don't know if I'm any good at it, but it's just kind of a natural feel for me. Uh, anytime I, I start singing, that's just where I sing. I sang with my mom and dad when I was a kid. Uh, growing up in church, I grew up on drugs. I was drugged to church all the time. Yeah. And, uh, but uh, mom and dad sung, and I'd sing with them a little bit when I was a kid, and it just always seemed like a natural thing to do. So, yeah. Pretty much, that's where I've, that's, that's my vocal uh, position. That's just where I've always sang. Yep. I've been playing guitar. Uh, I started when I was a kid, but I'm left-handed, and my dad—I was trying to learn on my dad's. But uh, my wife bought me a guitar after we were married, and I started trying to learn. Then, and I'm still trying to learn. So. I believe you got a Martin, don't you? I do. Yeah. Yep. Is it strung upside down or is it left-handed, right, right? No, it's actually a D28 L. Yeah, left-handed. It's so. left-handed, but it's your uh, low E is up top, That's right? Correct, yep. So it's not upside down. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. Now, so I'm people, strung the right way. Yeah. 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 Some people. Play them left handed and right. string them right. backwards. So, uh, well, uh, we're excited. Uh, we're actually on the road to Zalonica, Georgia, and uh, Mike is uh, very blessed. Uh, Mona has uh, been through some, uh, his wife has been through some sickness, and they've had some challenges, and uh, they're living testimonies uh, uh, to what God has done in their life. And uh, so, at this time, I'd like to talk a little bit about. Dungan in Virginia a while back, we uh, we had a, we done a fundraiser for a cancer patient. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Mike give a testimony about a particular incident that happened. Mike is a pilot. Uh, you fly airplanes, helicopters, jets, yeah, all all the above. Right. And uh, Mike was in the state police for I uh, did 22 years. 22 years. And a uh, very qualified pilot, still flies people, uh, super, super great pilot, and I've heard some uh, pretty impressive stories. So, Mike, at this time, I'm, I'm going to be quiet and just, uh, you feel free to, to tell us exactly what happened with the, uh, the incident uh, on the helicopter, and, and you just obey the Lord. Well, people say that, you know, back in biblical times, there was miracles that occurred that, Everybody knew it was a miracle, and and I hear people now say, uh, God don't do miracles like that anymore. Uh, <laughs> but my God does. Yes, He does. Yes, He does. So uh, back several years ago, I was uh, flying patient to uh, over to Crystal. I had a, uh, it's called a hydraulic heart over uh, on the helicopter. Mm -hmm. uh, hydraulic heart over. So the, basically the hydraulics froze up on the aircraft and so the hydraulics works like uh, kind of like power, power steering on your car. Mm -hmm. So some aircraft without hydraulics, the controls are so heavy with the with the air flowing across it that you it makes it impossible to move mm -hmm. without hydraulics. Mm -hmm. So um, they told me it's a hydraulic hard over with an autopilot um, malfunction as well. So as 
as I start my descent into the hospital, suddenly the, 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 the stick starts, the cyclone starts pitching back on me, and the aircraft begins to climb uh, uncontrollably. And I'm trying to force the stick forward, but with the high, no hydraulics, the control frictions were so... So you were starting to... Yeah, we, we were really climbing really hard. I had a patient in the back, had a medic, and a nurse in the back. Was it daylight or dark? It was daylight at the time. Yeah. I just crossed the Clinch Mountain, and suddenly the aircraft started pitching slowly at first, and then became more dramatic until the point where I knew we were going to stall or we were going to flip on our back. Mm. And uh, I couldn't do anything with the aircraft. I tried everything I could to push the nose over, and the aircraft just kept climbing. So, as a last resort, I kicked the pedals, um, then tried to flip the tail back over the top, so at least we wouldn't stall, and that would hopefully give me a few seconds to figure out what was going on. So I managed to get the tail flipped over, and uh, but you think that's better for now? Heading toward the earth at a pretty fast clip. And uh, one thing they tell you to never do, uh, this aircraft in fact is illegal to fly without the autopilot on. Mm -hmm. uh, as I fell forward in the seat belt, I could see the autopilot by the stairs. So I flipped off the autopilot and recovered the aircraft. Uh, and at that time, once the autopilot came off, I was able to control the aircraft somewhat. Mm -hmm. uh, slowed the aircraft down, we were probably within 150 feet of the earth at that time. Mm -hmm. Way too close. Okay. Uh, I managed to get the aircraft back under control. We got the, uh, landed, called for an ambulance, and uh, got the crew off. And uh, the aircraft was in. They took the aircraft back to Richmond. Try to figure out what was wrong with it. They took the uh, autopilot pack off. They took off the hydraulic pack, and they sent everything back to Grand Prairie, Texas, to have it all looked at. Uh, I still have the email. Eurocopter, American Eurocopter Times, Airbus helicopters now. Um, Eurocopter sent me an email that said that the events described by me and as they were recorded by the local computer system of the aircraft was impossible. And that there was no way I recovered this aircraft. Um, they put all the dynamics from the aircraft that was recorded on the computer into their simulator. Every time they do that, the aircraft comes apart in flight. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, there was a two inch tear in the tail boom. I almost tore the, when I flipped the tail, I almost tore the tail boom off. And uh, the, all the blade bearings, so the bearings that allow the blades to pitch, yeah, to move. Yeah. Uh, change pitch. Uh, I talked to the mechanic, he called me, he said he'd been working on aircraft for over 25 years, both in military and speed side. And of all the blade bearings he'd ever changed, he'd never found one that was bad. And every blade bearing in the aircraft was destroyed. Wow. Uh, he didn't understand how the blades could still even change pitch. Uh, uh, so they weren't able to recover anything from the hydraulic system. It was totally destroyed as well. Uh, but they were able to get the aircraft put back into service uh, after some major, major repairs to it. Uh, destroyed the transmission as well. They had to be completely, uh, they had to have a whole transmission. But with that being said, that was the hand of God. That was the hand of God. Uh, it had nothing to do with my pilot skills. Uh, the only thing I'd done was uh, hold on and try to do the best I could. Yep. Uh, and did something that was totally FAA illegal. So if anybody from the field that was watching, I'm probably in trouble now. Turning off the autopilot was not a life-saving move. It wasn't anything that was taught to me. It was something that God showed me to do. Yep. Um, so, my, my God's a miracle worker. Yes, He is. Uh, and He can do anything. That's right. That's right. Uh, so, you know, with an aircraft that should have came apart, uh, in a place that should have died, for whatever reason I've been, that does. God had a plan, yeah. yeah. God had a plan. God had a plan. Amen. So, sorry about the emotion, but no, still. that's what we wanted. I knew this would happen, and, and there's somebody out there that needs to hear this, and that's.
that's why I felt you needed to share that. Do you have anything else that you want to add to it? I didn't want to cut you off. So no, that. uh, that's, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, it's like you said, it's probably something that somebody needs to hear. Somebody uh, yeah, should be told, I guess. I don't tell them too often because of that. Uh, anyway, we're on our way to Georgia now. So. Yeah. Yeah. And God's good all the time. Yes, He is. Uh, you know, we never know when we uh, have been saved from. Uh, what, we don't know what the Lord protects us from on a daily basis. That's right. And that, that was one incident in my life where I knew uh, that God protected me from. Well, but certainly in the death. Yeah. But th those are miracles every day that occur to each and every one of us. That most of the time we that we're not even we're not even aware of, yeah. much less a preaching. Uh, right, right. You know? So you know that driver that ran a red light and you were twenty seconds late leaving the house, there was a reason for that. Yeah. And it's not the things that we do. God's mighty hand that protects us. Amen. Here we go. Amen. 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 All right. So I want to speak to you out there today that, that you're sitting there listening to this. I want you to, uh, this was our intentions ideal that we uh, interview uh, members of the group and, uh, and connect with the people. So first thing that we hope you walk away with from this is, is Chris Holder and Journey Home has never come to put on a show, but we're, we come to obey the Lord and to see people saved, to see people encouraged, to see people set free, to see people healed. So this is my message to you, and this is just a little small sermonette about two minutes long, and the title of it is, is God is in trouble. And you say, well, how can God be in trouble? Well, the scripture says in Psalms that God is your very present help in the time of trouble. That's, right. That's exactly right. When you're in trouble, that is when God shows up. So if you're out there, no matter what you're facing, if it's financial difficulty, you're facing uh, health problems, you're facing family problems, maybe you're lost without God, I want to tell you something. God is there in your time of need. You're not alone. Don't be discouraged. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. Maybe you're ready to throw in the towel. We want to encourage you to come to one of these uh, appointments that we go to. We list them on the website. Uh, if you want somebody to pray with you, we'll pray with you. We'll help you. We'll encourage you. And we want you to see what this group is all about. But you remember this. God is always with you in your trouble, in your time of need. So don't you give up. Don't be discouraged. And you stay encouraged. And remember, God is on your side and wants what's best for you. So we'll finish up with this. We're heading to Dahlonega, Georgia. Tonight we'll be in Georgia. In the morning, Greenville, Tennessee. Uh, check us out on uh, ChrisHolderJourneyHome.com uh, and also on Facebook. Check out our YouTube page and share this. If you can, when you watch this, share this and 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 share this the, the message that Mike Bowen has shared with you. This incredible testimony. Let this encourage you and show you that that God is is protecting you and helping you. And let this encourage you, minister. So share this with people. Tell people about it, and uh, we'll uh, look forward to seeing you the next time with uh, another interview. Hopefully, we can get Chris Holder behind the camera and we'll interview him <laughs> if possible. So uh, we, uh, we appreciate you all, and we'll see you next time. God bless you.